Welcome to LOA Today. I'm Walt Thiessen. With me today, the dynamic duo of Daniel Mangana and Alex King. This is your Daily Dose of Happy. We are so happy you decided to join us today. Daniel will be joining us in just a few minutes. He's uh, dealing with another uh, event that he's uh, finishing up, but he'll be logging in very quickly. But in the meantime, hey, Alex, you're looking good. You're looking like the Alex King, according to your uh, (laughs) out there on the screen. So that's a good thing. (laughs) But how's it going there, girl? It's going. Yeah? Just hanging out, enjoying the weather. All right. Well, the weather is gorgeous. It's yes. about time, too, here in the Northeast. We've been going through extreme heat or rain. It's nice to have good weather back again. Yeah, happy medium. <laughs> yeah, right? How about that? So I actually got to open my window today and turn the AC off for a second. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Who, my who AC was like, it? thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and Debbie G, is, uh, she's uh, connecting in via the live chat, reminding everybody that uh, everyone is invited to the Spirituality Gone Wild 4th anniversary on august 8th that's at 5 p.m pacific time so make sure that you put that on your calendar it should be quite the event and uh we're all looking forward to it. we're also those of us in the alex king world we're looking forward to another event coming up this weekend look at that smile on her face she's so excited <laughs> I just like your tell, pe- <laughs> tell, tell people what's going on this weekend i mean that uh, is that's cool this- this Saturday is Kenny and I's virtual wedding shower. A virtual wedding shower. Now I have to admit, this is a first for me. Yeah, yeah. I, I've never never seen her that. And I'm, I, I mean, I'm way out of it in terms of what other people are are uh, into these days. But it's like, is this common? Is this unusual? What is this? Well, with the pandemic, people had to get creative. Ah, okay. So this is sort of an outgrowth of that. Yeah. So okay. I just figured, why not do Zoom? It's easier that way. It'll be easier to plan. Uh, everyone can come because it, you can just be at home. Uh, we don't have to worry about wearing masks. We don't have to worry about anything because we're all sitting in the privacy of our own homes and we're still spending three hours enjoying each other's company. Very cool. By the way, Debbie punched in. She says, Alex, you are stunning and big congratulations to you. So. <laughs> There you Thank go. You, darling. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, too, this is going to be an unusual one from my perspective. This will be the first wedding shower I've ever intended from the beach. Because Louise and I are going to the beach this weekend, but we're going to try to connect in via the Internet. Listen, to if I Zoom had call. Wi-Fi at the beach, I'd be there, too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, coming to you from the sandy, sandy days. <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, to Tina, who's tuning in? Good to see you, Tina. Yeah, it's going to be a good weekend to go to the beach, I think, from what Louise was saying. She was looking at the weather forecast, and it looks like it's going to be a good beach day. Not that there's such a thing as a bad beach day. You know, there's really yeah, not such a Well, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I guess it depends on what you're comparing it to. I mean, I, I recall, well, actually, like, no, t-shirts. because if it rains, technically that's not a beach day. So you're right. That's true. That yeah. Day. Yeah, I, I remember a t-shirt that that I saw once that said a, a bad day at the beach is better than a good day at the office. I think that's what I mean. There's a comparison that's, there. Well, it depends yeah. on your office, though. Well, that's true. Yeah. If you work from home, you could be at the beach. And that's a thing now. Mm-hmm. It's it, it, it. This is a really interesting thing. Now, we've talked about the pandemic from a variety of different angles since the whole thing yeah. started, right? And mm-hmm. one of the things that we've tried to do here on the show is emphasize what's the good side. What are the positives of dealing with the pandemic? Um, and there are quite a few, quite a few that have uh, occurred to us over the past year. One of them is the trend of working at home. Right. And that has produced a really interesting side effect, hasn't it? Because apparently there are a number of industries now that are having trouble getting people to come back to work now that they come back to work. Yep. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. Some people got a taste had, of freedom. Some states had to pay people to go back to work. Right. Exactly. They they gave them a choice. You can stay on unemployment or you can take this lump sum of $1,200 and go back to work. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My state didn't do that. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, But would you have taken it? That's the other question. But but I'm not even talking necessarily somebody who's on unemployment. I'm just talking people who they're they're just taking another job. Taking another job or taking this time to retire. One or the other, yeah. yeah. Or maybe even starting a business. Yeah. Maybe they're starting something online. Maybe they started something during the pandemic. They couldn't mm-hmm. go anywhere. So they figured, okay, let's start a business at home. Yeah, exactly. 
So this is producing a pretty big shift that I think is going to be felt not here, not just here in the U.S., but in countries around the world mm -hmm. for years to come. This right. is, and it's going to be for the better, I think. I think so too. Because um, I, I think where we have been as a world for quite some time is in a belief that says you have to go through life, you have to work hard, you have to work hard until you basically drop dead, and that's your life. Who and said that's that? changing. Well, that, that's pretty much, that, that's been what the attitude has been among. Not in my the, house. Well, maybe not your house. Well, you have a yeah. very unusual house, let's be honest. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Yeah. That, this is, that, that's like, that's what the, the typical viewpoint was. And that's shifting. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that's part of the global shift in energy that's been going on. I think there's a, a vibration that's been going on globally. It's not always comfortable <laughs> it's not always <laughs> fun but it's happening yeah and it's a good thing so mm -hmm. and here we are going to a virtual wedding shower as one of the little pieces of fallout that comes from that yeah i'm excited because uh i'm i'm not the one planning it so i don't exactly know what's going on little tricky situation with the gifts though <laughs> <laughs> yeah i'm wondering how that's going to work i'm kind of curious <laughs> so the plan was i did i did a cash registry and that's what I was going to leave it at. But then my friend was like, well, if we're going to do a shower, you should want to open some gifts on the Zoom. And I was like, good point. OK, so then I went into Amazon and made a registry. Mm. I got carried away. So um, <laughs> there's like 90 things on the list and like 25 people coming to the shower. So, <laughs> Weddings do tend to get carried away. So that's yeah, quite normal. But I was right? just like, oh, this comes with this and this comes with that. It was, it was, <laughs> I see what happens to brides when they're like running around Walmart with their little wedding registry gun going crazy. Right. I totally yeah. see how that happens now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But, well, um, what, once you get the inspiration, then you start thinking about it. You start thinking about what do you want, which you don't exactly. normally do, right? Yeah. And I'm like, well, I, my kitchen does need this. And yes, I do <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> but to me, I was like, I have everything. I don't need anything. I was like, if anything, we'd want to take a honeymoon or uh, put a down payment on a house. Mm -hmm. So that was why I did the cash registry. And, but then I'm like, wait, if I get the new house, when I get the new house, I'm going to need stuff to put in it. <laughs> so, ah, okay. That's where the register. Well, plus the, uh, the other reason we did the cash registry is because we didn't want to be bothered with packing up our car on the way home. Yeah, and that is a consideration. Because mm -hmm. at, at a traditional wedding shower, it gets overcrowded. Yeah. <laughs> just well, that it's and just... the wedding itself. I didn't want people bringing gifts. Even more so. I, yeah. yeah, at the end of my honeymoon, I got to pack up all my stuff. On top of the stuff we decorated the place with, now I got to carry all these gifts or envelopes. <laughs> yeah. And, and the envelope part is nice too. I have yeah. to admit, I remember that very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> that, that was a good part. I like that a lot. <laughs> we all like envelopes. <laughs> I think so. Yes. It's funny though, because when, when you're, um, when you're actually in the spot of you just have done the wedding shower or you've just done the wedding uh -huh. and it's like the day after, two days after you got back from the honeymoon or whatever. And you realize you have this list of people who gave you, some of them gave you really, really nice gifts, you know, mm -hmm. and you appreciate all of them, but some of them are like, whoa, they just knocked your socks off. And I, I don't know how other couples did it. We sat down and just meticulously went through every single gift and wrote personalized notes. Thank you so much. All that kind of stuff. And you do that for, well, we had, we had a, medium size wedding. We had like 80 to 100 people, something like that. So mm -hmm. um, we had a few to go through. And you, after you go through writing all those notes, I mean, I didn't really think about it at the time, but looking back, that was a vibe lifter. Yeah. That was a really big vibe because you're doing a lot of gratitude. A letter form. A whole lot of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I mean, I kind of associate it I mean, when you get married, you, there's like this whole big vibe lift anyway. That's just yeah. you know, part and parcel. So I kind of associate with that. But looking back, just that that one event of just mm -hmm. answering all those gifts and thanking people and so forth. I mean, Louise actually kept the notebook, which I thought was pretty cool. Oh, that's cute. She kept the notebook indicating, OK, we got this from this person, this from this person. So that and it was helpful. Years later, we'd say, who did we get this from? Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, I have an app that does all that for me, so thank God. Oh, you do it by app. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's true. The not.com does everything. Mm, yes. Yeah. 
that, that I have to say, computers have definitely made things a whole lot easier. Imagine but, how much easier it's going to be for the future people. Like they're just going to snap their fingers and things will be done. But, but well, what I was going to say is, but there is something to be said for writing it all out. Because That's you're true. spending more time building that vibration of appreciation. Well, I'm going to send personalized emails. Okay, so at least you're typing. Yeah. Yeah. Because so my hand good. cramps up when I write. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> you and me both. That, that was an issue for me in the Thai boot camp. Oh, wow. I, I, well, because they send you um, a personalized journal. It, it's a really beautiful one. Like I can show it to you. Leather cover. Ooh. It's got a snap opening and so forth. It's gorgeous. Oh, that's I wrote like a page, I wrote a page and a half and my hand was in pain. Yeah, because we're not used to it anymore because we're typing. Well, I, well, my hand was always in pain even before the computer came along. Oh, I don't I, know. I, I just had. I'm, I'm pretty sure I had some sort of emotional thing going on that I was, you know, storing stuff in my body and it was expressing itself that way. But mm. either way, it doesn't matter. The point is, it hurt. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to do that. So yeah, typing was a whole lot better. But the, the important thing is really spending the time on it. And yeah, that was the other piece of the puzzle that I, I had never really been a journaler before I did the boot camp. And mm -hmm. so that kind of pushed my limits a little bit, which was a good thing. Um, but when you spend your time and you put your your feeling into it, you put your emotion into what you're writing, mm -hmm. like you would do with gratitude notes, you know, yes. appreciation notes to people who send gifts. It makes a huge difference. You can right. feel it. It's palpable and it stays with you. Yeah, it has a lasting effect. It really does. Um, I can still recall, I don't remember exactly what we said in each of the notes, but I can recall some of the notes that we wrote in terms of who we wrote them to. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there, there are people who, there, some people gave us some gifts that we were just, we just thought were over the top. Wow, they were so generous. Yeah. And it, it, it actually, believe it or not, it enhanced the way I felt about them. Like, wow, this, they must really like us. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> And I, I never thought you could really buy somebody else, so to speak, you know, with you know, with a gift. <laughs> but but it turns out but you, you can, can try. Well, it, it it it's not so much you're buying them with a gift; it's that you're yeah. showing them appreciation with the gifts. Yes, and, and I think that's really what what caught my attention in a big mm -hmm. big way. So yeah, I think very fondly on some of those people. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. <laughs> so all right, well. You are now, let's see, today we're, we're at the end of July, near third week of July. So you are now almost exactly three months away from your wedding. I am 92 days out. 92 days. So, yeah, that's pretty close to three months right there. Yep. Now, I know I've asked this question before, and I think I know what the answer is now. Are you getting more nervous? Not nervous about the day, nervous that I don't have everything done. Well, yeah, that's what it's all about. That's what the wedding yeah. dinners are. It's not the day, I, I, it's the lead up. It's like, oh, the have I have to be done. They have, okay. Yeah. They say they start about six months out. I think about five or four months out. I was like, okay, I got to get, I woke up at three o'clock in the morning. Like, I got to get this done because that can't happen. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's coming though. It's coming. Mm -hmm. And we still haven't picked a honeymoon spot. We're thinking. Really? We're thinking, honestly, we might just stay overnight at the hotel that, that we're all going to be at. And we're going to do um, the presidential suite for the night because we get a discount. And then just come home and then save up for a year and go to Hawaii. Ooh, that's what that's like my top three destinations is Hawaii. I want to go there. That's my number too. one destination. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I try not to say that too much. Yeah, it, that, that's, I thought, I have, I have video of it that I watched. I mean, that's how excited yeah. I get about the idea of going there. Well, my friend just went there on like a six week home exchange thing. Oh, really? And so she basically got to go to Hawaii for free because she, she got the, it was her, her husband, her two kids, and then all her family saw she, how much fun was having and they all flew there too. <laughs> they all piled in. <laughs> yeah. They were like, do you need a babysitter? Cause grandma's coming. Yeah, right. Then. So yeah, she did. She did. I'm gonna get the details from her because I want to do it the same way. I'm not gonna be gone for six weeks, but still, um, yeah, she did a home exchange and then she saved up her points, so her whole trip was free. Wow, good for her. 
That's really great. Yeah. I, I think I do want to wait until, I, mean, I don't know what you and Kenny are planning, but I think I want to wait until after the the angst that's associated with the pandemic has really calmed, because it still mm-hmm. exists. You know, there's still there's still a lot of anxiety going on there. Um, and certainly I don't want to walk into any anxiety. I don't want to cause any anxiety you know, or yeah. anything like that. But yeah, once all that calms down, why here we come? <laughs> I, mean, well, I figure about a year is about good enough. From here? From yeah, here. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably about right. Yeah. Which also gives you more time to figure out where you guys are going to go, right? Yeah, and you got to get all the details and the money and all that <laughs> stuff. <laughs> so. Well, that's what the envelopes are for. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we got to get to October 1st. <laughs> Just don't do what Louise and I did. Okay. Well, we were trying to figure out how to pay for our wedding. Now, this was uh, the end of the 1990s. Yeah. And neither one of us were in great financial shape. I was in yeah. pretty good financial shape, but not great. Um, I think she was, she was just kind of coming to the end of her career as a therapist. And she was kind of burned out from all of that. So she was leaving that behind. And so we, we just didn't really feel like we had a lot of money to work with and mm-hmm. weddings can be expensive, especially, I mean, you're doing a lot of stuff virtually now that helps mm-hmm. some, but there was none of that available at that point. So a cheap wedding was like five to 10 grand and I don't even know yeah. what they are now. Um, so we, we had just basically, we didn't really know about the law of attraction, but we basically had put out there a, a, a cry, cry for help. God, please help us. We don't know how we're going to pay for this. Yeah. Be really careful how you put those requests out. <laughs> okay, what happened? What happened? Speaking, speaking of going to the beach, we went to the beach. This was in August of 98. We went to the beach in Rhode Island. And at the end of our day at the beach, we were driving up to where her parents lived or lived at that point. Mm-hmm. Uh, they both passed down since then. But uh, her parents lived in Cranston, Rhode Island, mm-hmm. which is you know probably about a half hour up from there. And it was in the middle of the week. Um, we were on Route 2, which is one of the main routes that goes north and south through Rhode Island. Mm. It's, a, it's, a, it's like a state highway kind of a thing. And there was nobody on the road. It was the middle of the day. It was a work day, all that kind of stuff. And Louise said to me, do um, you mind if I drive? Because I know the route better. Now, bear in mind, I had just got this car. The car oh. was like two months old. And I loved it. It was a beautiful car. It was, it was, I don't it like where this car is black going. and I smoke pins. No, you don't like where it's going. <laughs> That's when I uttered the world's most famous lines. Uh-oh. Sure. Just don't get into an accident. <laughs> you so did it to yourself. You, you can, I, I didn't know about the law of attraction. I know. I had no idea. I know. <laughs> so 20 minutes later, we're sitting by the side of the road because, um, on this highway where there was nobody on the highway, there Louise was driving and there was another car coming the opposite direction. And about 150 feet in front of us, they turned in front of us and stopped in the middle of our lane. What? Well, it, we found out later she was checking to see if she was in the right place for the wedding she was going to attend. <laughs> no way. <laughs> I am not kidding you. <laughs> So Louise slams on the brakes. We slam into the car. Mm-hmm. Our car is totaled. Her car is totaled. Fortunately, nobody was seriously hurt. We all had minor injuries, but nobody was seriously hurt. But, I mean, it was devastating. Yeah. It was also her fault, and her insurance company agreed. So we got this huge payout. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> I got a brand new car out of it. We got new bicycles out of it. We got uh, the wedding paid for. I paid for an engagement ring. <laughs> wow. It's not, it's not the ideal way to collect money through the law of attraction to pay for a wedding. That's all I'm but saying. But it happened. It happens. You just got to be careful is all I'm saying. Yeah. Thank God everyone was okay. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And thank God for insurance. Thank God for insurance. And I, I applaud, I'll, I'll happily give a plug for her insurance company. Her insurance company was Progressive Insurance. And nice. I give them a lot of credit because when they Wait, sent the rep over. Was around back then? Yeah, it was. Yeah. 
And uh, when their rep came around to settle up with us, mm. the first thing that came out of her mouth was, we admit it's our fault. Yeah. I said, whoa, shoot. I mean, how can I get mad at you? Right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But what did affect me is that when, right after the, the accident, we all got carted off in ambulances to the hospital to get checked out and x-rays yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And when I was on the gurney waiting to get my x-ray, they wheeled her over in a wheelchair next to me, which was a mistake. Yeah, you're not supposed <laughs> don't to. Don't do that. The two people who are involved in an accident, don't put them next to each other in an emergency room. That is no. not a good idea. But I was trying to be diplomatic and so forth, and so I nodded to her, and I said, how are you? And she kind of nodded. She said, what happened? I said, what do you mean, what happened? You happened. Well, you pulled in front of us and stopped in the middle of our lane. And she says, oh, I don't remember that. I bet you don't. And as soon as she said that, I just saw red. Like, yeah. oh, you're not going to try to change the story here, are you? Yeah, she was. That's, th th this is not going to fly with me. <laughs> from that point on, I was determined to get every cent out of her I could get. <laughs> Meanwhile, her son comes over, realizes what's going on, and says, Let, Mom, let's go over here. And he wheels her across the room. Yeah, right? the room. <laughs> Oh, my God. So I, I negotiated pretty hard with that uh, progressive agent. And she was very fair, very reasonable. And we came to an agreement within a matter of hours. It didn't take very long at all and paid for everything. So nice. now, didn't plan it that way. In fact, it was really strange. In the emergency room, mm -hmm. while we're... Um, we're getting checked by the doctor, and it was just after we'd gotten the x-rays. And as we're getting checked by the doctor, a police officer comes in to write mm -hmm. his report on the accident report. Right. And he, he asked what happened, and Louise was kind of dazed. She couldn't even answer the question. You know, well, what happened? She said, I, I don't know. I, I, she was there, and I hit her. She, that was all she could say. I had seen, you know, how when stuff happens, it happens in slow motion. I experienced yep. it in slow motion. I saw yep. everything happening. I could tell what was going to happen. Like, <laughs> just stop. <laughs> Hit the brain. <laughs> <laughs> so I knew exactly every single detail, and I spelled out the whole thing for him. And he's writing in his book. He says, "Yep, that's pretty much what the marks on the pavement said." Okay, we're good. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, as I'm describing to him, in the back of my mind, and now this is my car, right? Right. In the back of my mind, for a weird reason, I can't even tell you why, but in the back of my mind, what I was thinking was, how am I going to pay for this? Because I was in shock. <laughs> it wasn't our fault, but yeah. that didn't matter. I, right. didn't, I, I, I wasn't even driving. I was a passenger in the accident, but it was my car. So I figured, well, I have to pay for this somehow. I'd forgotten I had insurance. I forgot that she had insurance. I forgot that Louise had insurance. All that was outside of my mind. All I had to, <laughs> was, I had to pay for this somehow. And then it finally... You know, sunk in. Oh, that's right. That's what insurance is for. <laughs> <laughs> that's why we pay the big bucks. <laughs> that's right. So, ugh. anyway, Daniel's joined us. Hello, Daniel. Hi. We are. Oops, oh, here, here. Your, mic, your, your mic didn't really work there. Oh dear. <laughs> he's, he's going to redo it again. All right. He's going to go out and come back again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we forgot to take his other mic off. From he did that last time. That's true. I think he did do that. That's okay. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was such a weird experience, a weird event to go through, that, that whole accident thing. It, I mean, I learned a lot, but it was still a weird event to go through. So Yeah. Okay, now, now let's see. Let's do a mic check. Testing, are you there? No, still nothing. Crickets. I don't know. Um, uh huh. <laughs> Oh, he's taking off the earbuds. This is serious. Nothing. Nothing. No, not hearing anything, friend. Sorry. Technical difficulties. Please stand by. Nothing there. All right. Well, we'll, we'll just keep talking. We'll let Daniel see if he can figure that one out. No. Oh, yeah. there we go. Yeah. Um, for some reason, StreamYard since yesterday is refusing to work with my Steinberg. Well, that's not nice. You got to tell us how to work better. Today. Oh, now you're gone again. You're on mute. Oh, your mic is muted. Yes. 
Yeah, it, it just it detaches and then mutes. StreamYard has not been my friend since yesterday. Wow. Well, yeah, we got a little chat with StreamYard. Yeah. That was me pointing very aggressively at StreamYard. <laughs> if I've been told already how to see that, then maybe mm. I can see that right now. Mm. 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 So, okay. what you want to do is go to YouTube, search LOA Today Podcast Videos, Look for our smiling faces. Click down below to the red subscribe button. Next to the red subscribe button, there's a little silver bell. Make sure you click all so you always be notified when we are live. Now, there was a time. That, now, most people can't see this. Most people are listening only to the podcast. But right. for those who, who can see the video, there was a time where Daniel would not have done that little mocking thing like he did right now because he would not have been. this time. It didn't matter to him this time. He was enjoying it. Enjoy away. That's what I say. <laughs> Living his best life now. He's like, everyone yeah. can see me. This is what we do now. Yeah, this is what this it is. This is cool. I love it. That is a lot of water. Yes, it is. Six liters. Whoa! <laughs> Man, you could drown in that. I'm committed to drinking more water. So I fill this bad boy up several times a day. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> drink. Wow. I try. I can't do it. <laughs> well, it's not that you can't do it. It's just you don't like getting to know the bathroom that well. No, it's I literally hate the taste of water, and I know it sounds crazy. I don't care. I hate it. I hate it. It makes me. What nauseous. about flavored drops of some kind? Those get expensive after a while. <laughs> <laughs> They're like three ninety nine a pop, and I'm like, and I can't just have one flavor. I got to have all the flavors because I got to alternate every day. I can't just drink one of those things. Like, come on. Well, you you could decide that you're worth it. Well, I'm, I am worth it, but what does water have to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> my, my worthiness does not need to lead to the fruit right. of the companies having my money. <laughs> I'm also worthy of this money, so I'm going to keep it. Okay. Exactly. Yes, the dynamic always changes when I get both Alex and that Daniel on the program the at the same time. <laughs> it doesn't That's even take five right minutes. There. Holy cow. <laughs> this is so satisfying. Oh, my God. <laughs> Look at the size of that thing. That thing's huge. Six meters, baby. Whoa. I wouldn't even be able to lift it to pour it into my cup. Like, I don't even. <laughs> I believe in you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, see, so he has he has the child version too. So he has the big one, and you know, the parent one, and the child one. He pours it into the the, the smaller one. That makes it more manageable. I can, As I can we pour that. into the youth of today. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, very nice. Very that was nice. great. That was fantastic. Yes. I'll, I'll be it. That our water is much more delicious. <laughs> Oh, uh, actually, I wanted to ask you, Alex, why don't you, do you do filtered water? Do you filter your water? I do bottled water. Filtered water is more delicious. It filter, is. The filter is on my wedding registry. Okay. Okay. <laughs> and, and we were talking about that because she's got her virtual wedding shower coming up this weekend, you know. Oh, yeah. Saturday. Dan got an invite. but didn't respond. Hang on. What time is it Saturday? One to One to four. Yeah. Eastern. Eastern. I forgot. Remember, he's over on the West Coast. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to I'm going to pop in and say hello. <gasps> Yay! I can't say it's Saturday and I don't want to die, so I won't be there for the whole day. <laughs> okay. A reasonable, reasonable thing to say. I well, that's why, I made, that's why I did, also did the virtual Zoom because that way, like, you know, people can pop in. They've got kids. It's Saturday. Like, you got to do what you got to do. You can pop in, say hi, watch your gift be opened, and leave. There you go. It's a good thing. It's a very good yeah. thing. Not good. So we, we, anyway, we were talking about, among other things, I was telling a story about how um, not to get money for your wedding, but <laughs> we were also talking about the beauty of what happens when you get all those gifts for a wedding and you're writing the thank you notes. Because when you get enough thank you notes, you, you're getting some pretty high vibe from writing all those thank you notes. It's just a whole lot of appreciation going on. And I, I was reminiscing about when Louise and I got married. We, we married in 99. And 
we spent a whole day and a half, I think, just writing notes to the people mm. who, who gave us gifts. And I, I didn't know about the law of attraction at the time. I, I was telling Alex, so it, it was not something I'd ever heard of. So I, I just kind of associate it with the joy of you know, having gotten married and so forth. But that was a really big high we got from writing those notes. Really big high. And it lasted for days. Mm. So it, it really, I, I should have understood. I, I didn't know how any of it worked at that point. But I should have understood based on that experience. You really do raise your vibe by expressing gratitude, especially when you do it you know, repeatedly for 24 hours at a time. <laughs> yeah. Cool stuff. Really cool stuff. Um, oh, I know. I want to uh, ask Daniel about something. We, we had uh, a, a Thai boot camp meeting today, and uh, David uh, David Strickle is actually on vacay. He's, he's, he's vacay, baby. He's vacaying. Yeah, that's right. Where'd he go for vacation? He and his partner are in the Keys in Florida. So, oh. yeah, they're having a good old time. Oh, yeah. Yeah, really, really good. But um, anyway, while he, he is away, a topic came up today, and I, I want to get your take on it. Um, it was actually Stacy who brought it up, and she was talking about perfectionism and how perfectionism can actually get in the way of your development when you're in entire boot camp, but it also gets in the way of just you know dealing with life and doing things in life. And I raised a question about it because it's something that's been kind of on my mind. Um, it, the way the way that they handle the whole idea of of being high vibe or low vibe, they call it as you know, Daniel. They call it up up the spiral, down the spiral. Mm -hmm. and it, they actually have a little graph. It's like five different levels. There's, there's the joy level. There's a you know, pretty good level. There's neutral. There's not. There's below neutral, and there's down depression, or however you want to call it. But there's like five levels in there, spiral. And I'm, I'm usually in in the feel good mode. I, I'm not really at the high joy mode most of the time, but in the feel good mode. And so what I put out in, as my question for the day was: Am I being too perfectionistic? Perfectionistic if I'm saying, well, the stream said if I'm not in joy, I'm down the spiral. And so, like, feeling good isn't good enough. And they, they all pretty much agreed that, yeah, that's kind of perfectionistic. Um, so I, I, was, I was just kind of curious, what's your take on that? I mean, you're, you're always a high vibe guy anyway, but do you think it's really important to be up in joy all the time or does it really matter that much? Depends. On what? Does being in joy dictate your ability to stay up in spiral? Well, it shouldn't dictate it at all, should it? Aha! Aha! <laughs> you see? So, in other words, your point is, if, if you're relying on being in joy as your your where you're going to be positioned on the spiral, well, I agree, that's a problem. You, you yeah. definitely don't want to be doing that. So, I I led the it was my mastery class on Friday. Yeah, how did that go? It was good fun. All right. Uh, and one of the things I invited us to look at was, who cares about the spiral? Ooh. Ooh. That's pretty radical. Yeah. yeah. For me, my, my own personal mastery journey is, all right, cool, the spiral's there, sometimes it'll be up, sometimes it'll be down, but none of it affects my connection to source or my capacity to manifest, even in the face of seeming adversity, obstacles, and such delights, essentially, expansion and what the stream actually said when we had the stream section so a master leads and then the stream jumps in and shares based on what we talked about and answers questions and she was like what about if you just trusted where you were in your spiral enough to just say whatever the best outcome is i'm down for that mm. which when i even look at the work that i i had been going on for myself and then i share as i'm i share with my clients and students as I go forward, I share, oh, this is what my adventure's been. It's the iteration that I'm moving into now is really that whole beyond the beyond the idea of wanting specific things, just playing with the adventure of what shows up on our human adventure from a place of knowing innately on an abundance, love, joy, and expansion. Mm-hmm. So this like super duper, so we already had macro intentions, but like super duper high level macro is, my only intention is that I'm whole, perfect, strong, powerful, loving, harmonious, grateful, worthy, and happy. That's it. Whatever shows up in the face of that, I'm getting. Yeah. I love the way he said that it's only. Right? That's what got me. 
<laughs> you just listed 12 things or something, something like that. Yeah, but that's, that's an affirmation. I do not for the life of me remember where I got that affirmation from, but that's an actual affirmation from somewhere. Okay. It's like, if you had, if this was your default, then okay, cool. Can you well, text yeah. that to me? Yeah, send me a Dubri WhatsApp and I'll reply with said words. I mean, because when, when you get an affirmation like that, you, you basically just covered the gamut of everything you could possibly want. So why would you ask for anything more? I mean, it's exactly. right there. Like, I can leave the details alone. So, I mean, and we were talking about the role that boot camp has in the journey. And it's like, so the first thing I teach people is beyond intention, where we learn to set intentions and to create a life according to intentionality. But generally speaking, that's, supportive because people have been running on programs that aren't serving them. So we need to learn to disrupt them in order to have a conscious relationship with what we're creating. Then I say, let's drop specific intentions and just focus on a few emotional states that we want and playing in those emotional states. Then when people come on retreat with me, we talk about agreements, just basically writing the rules against which our reality is going to unfold. And then even being okay with whatever emotional experience we have in the face of that. And now we're moving to the step beyond that where life is just this journey, this game that we're on. And we're looking to play that game as our divine expression and then see what happens. Mm, yes. And that divine expression is uh, the way the stream describes it is you're, you're going to go up, up and down the spiral. That's just part of going along that journey. And but, you enjoy that too. Yeah. So what? I mean, that's like, okay, that's part of the, part of the job, part of, part of what happens. No mm. big deal. Which makes sense because the only time we really ever get have have trouble, the only time we ever get stuck on stuff is because well, we get stuck on stuff. We just get stuck there. And here's the thing, and this is what came from the, the course I was doing the other day that threw me into this perpetual existential crisis for so long. It's well, really, it's our stories about the thing that creates the crap around. Right. It. Exactly. Our stories, our perspectives. Oh my god, that happened. That. <laughs> That kind of is what was going to happen anyway. Right. It's like with the, with the um, I can't remember who said it, but like they said with COVID, the, the, the worst thing that can happen is that you pass away. Mm -hmm. Okay. That was always going to happen. Yeah, but yeah, but you never knew that when it was going to happen before, so nothing's actually right. changed. Exactly. Nothing has changed. Oh, but then there's the suffering. and That could happen anyway. Right. You could get yeah, any other the myriad of diseases. You could get hit by a car. You could fall off of a swing. You know, you could eat really horrible food, like really horrible food. Like any of these things can happen. Nothing's changed. But our perception, our perspective on now that we've got a villain that we can like yes. poke our food right. Yeah. Everyone knows their minds. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. That's precisely what happens. And so it, nothing's changed. So if we just went around like, okay, I could die today or I could have an amazing day. I could be sad today or I could be happy today. Right now, I'm in conscious relationship to it. And because I'm in conscious relationship to it, I have the opportunity to direct my expectation of it. Where am I going to go with that? Well, where you're going with it is that you, you're putting it in perspective. Yeah, you're, you're putting it into a perspective that says, OK, yeah, something terrible could happen. Mm -hmm. And ultimately, do I really want to give a lot more attention to that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you know, have I covered it yet? <laughs> it's like, are we done? Are we yeah. done? Exactly. Are you done? Are you done? <laughs> what movie is that from? I don't know. I don't remember. You recognize it. Yeah. Are you done? <laughs> are you really done? <laughs> Oh, good stuff. And that's it. My teeth look really lovely on this camera. Yeah, the sun. Really you got a lot of white, white there on your teeth. Like, oof, but blinding. I was, doing, I was doing a live stream on Facebook. I did a Q and A section. I sort of, oh, what do you do with your teeth? They look so good. <laughs> I brush them twice a day. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I put in a bit more work than that, and I wasn't that sarcastic. But it was just nice to have a compliment on my teeth. Just yeah. Like, so appreciating them right now. <laughs> We're all about self appreciation. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt at all. That is, that's a great point that you were making though about the perspective, because that perspective is what we lose when we're DTS to use the tie-up. 
uh, vernacular down the spiral. But uh, yeah, we, we, we choose to be there. That, that's what's so odd about it. We choose to be there. We don't think about it that way early on. I mean, those of us who have become veterans know that, yes, we chose to be there. But one of the reasons we go into Thai boot camp is because we didn't realize that. And then we start to realize, yeah, I chose to be there. And it's a bit of an eye opener. Like, when you know ooh. better, you do better. Well, you did. Well, that's the theory anyway. I think, it, yeah. I think it's true. I think it plays out. So far, you know, so far so good. <laughs> It could be like the guy who's falling out of the building and, you know, as he's halfway down, the, the guy shouts out, how do you know, how, how do you like your decision so far about jumping off the building? Oh, so far it's good. You know? <laughs> Where do you get these anecdotes from? I was just going to ask that. <laughs> you, you live long enough, you get all this really stupid crap thrown your way and you just remember some of it. That's all it is. <laughs> I hope I have so many musings like you do when I'm here. <laughs> you will, guaranteed. Oh, it's going to be great. I can't wait. You, you just can't live this long without, you know, having all this stuff come your way and, and learning to laugh at it. Yeah. Well, I'm already That's laughing. That's really the key. <laughs> well, yes, of course. Yeah. But but it's also learning to do it. Yeah. The learning part, I think, is the most important thing. If you can learn to laugh, you can learn to laugh at anything. That's and true. some people will think that you're rude, but what you really yeah. are is healthy. Agreed. Not that you want to go laugh in somebody's face to just be rude to them. That's not the point. Not to be rude, but sometimes it happens. Yeah, well, I will like, what else are you going to do? You might as well. Well, you, you could get mad. You could get angry. You, you, you could cry. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of different. I mean, there there are dozens of emotions. You can pick one. <laughs> Which one do you want to have? Well, why why waste the time on the ones that waste energy? That is that is the point, isn't it? Yeah. We get to pick. We get to decide. It's a good thing. <laughs> oh, um, the other thing I wanted to ask you about, Daniel, uh, kind of came up in in the boot camp, was people who find themselves going through changes and the changes are disorienting because mm -hmm. it's created a new experience. Like like uh, one of the newest boot campers talked about how she um, she was finding that her old friends all of a sudden are going away. And she was worried about that. Like, where, where, where are they going to be, get replaced by, you know, new friends? And I, I was trying to reassure her, yeah, in fact, you're, you're going to get better friends. If you're raising your vibrations, yeah, you're going to get better friends. But and so that's kind of a mild version of it. But going through changes is going to produce, that, that's where the roller coaster comes from. You're, you're getting a different you put out there into the world. And so you're going to get different results out of that. And that can be a bit disorienting. Mm -hmm. Now, for some reason, and I guess this is what I wanted to ask you about, over time, the disorientation gets less. Like, it's almost like we get used to the roller coaster. Like, oh, yeah, okay, here comes the curve again, big deal. Whereas the first time it was, ah! <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, okay, I'm being a little dramatic, but you know, you know what I mean? It's it's like when, when, you're, when you're going through the changes the first few times, it, it throws you, and then after a while you get used to it. And, and so I'm, I'm asking, I'm not sure exactly what I'm asking. I'm asking, I imagine you've been through that, but how do you, how do you help somebody else who's going through it? I think that's where I'm trying to go. How do you help somebody who's going through that and doesn't really know how to handle that? Stop! <laughs> okay. <laughs> of course change is going to be different. That's the whole point. You want something different, otherwise you'd be the same. Cause is going to be disorienting. Disorientation is a sign that things aren't what you're used to. It's something to be celebrated. Stop! That's what I said. <laughs> As usual, concise and to the point. Facts. <laughs> actually, actually. No, but honestly, it's like, what you expecting? It was going to feel the same while it was getting different? Like, yeah. get real, bro. Mm -hmm. Get really real, bro. <laughs> well, honestly, I don't think we even think about what is it going to be like. When we get to the point where we want to make changes, it, it almost feels like, oh, just give me change. I mean, I'm done with this. I got to get out of here. Oh no, the change is coming. I didn't feel the difference. Oh, the change is coming. But oh. Really? oh no, my financial situation isn't going to be the same as I elevate my brain with vibration. I wonder what's going to happen. <laughs> Maybe elevated vibration experiences based on the fact that you're in an elevated vibration. It could be anything, but that's a guess. I like the way you turned that into a Stephen King novel. That was good. 
What can you say? <laughs> I do do. <laughs> Movies weren't working, so we had to go with literature. Okay, all right. <laughs> Well, I think the movies were working just fine. We just couldn't identify what the movies were. That was the only problem. Uh -huh. uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, Alex, manifest. I told you. Olga even likes it. Wow. I was like, normally like shows is like, babe, this is what I need to do to relax. Okay. And she'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> I like got home from work, I get home from the office and then we play with Ethan until like he, he eats and then he has his bath and he goes to bed and then we talk yeah. a bit. Ethan's not even down yet, can we watch our show please? <laughs> yes. That's the type of reviews I like to hear. 22 episodes per season? Yeah, we're on season two in a week and halfway through. Nice. That's how you do it. Like, you power watch. I was trying to get her to watch Billions and I was like, so can we watch maybe Billions today? <laughs> We watch 20 minutes of an episode. I'm tired. Can I go to bed now? <laughs> really? Like, I want to know what happens next in the thing with the thing. Even though I've seen it two times, I still want to see what happens this time. Maybe I have a different experience. I'm in a new quantum vibration now, but okay. <laughs> wow. So, okay, so I, I have to say, Olga's reaction is actually intriguing me. Like I, I, no, I now want to know more about this. My thing. Emotions. Don't play with my emotions. No, no, no. I'm not. I'm not kidding. I'm. I'm. I'm serious. Like, because I. I have a good sense. I mean, not that Dan talks a lot about Olga, but from the little bit that he's talked about, I get the sense that her taste, so to speak, is is not going to be too far from mine. So if she's liking this, I'm wondering what it is. I'm going to say it like I said it before. I think you're going to like it, Walt. It's okay. But I've been hurt too many times. Too many times I've been hurt trying to bring the light of a show of a movie to you. So I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Wait till you get to the later seasons and they start like popping in lore. They are? Yeah, oh yeah. Hang on, but there's only two seasons. Wait, no. There's only two seasons on Netflix. There's three seasons. <gasps> <sighs> <laughs> Look at that smile. The satisfaction in your face was everything. Because I was about to be like, because I'm, I'm season but eleven. Yeah, they're where, still trying to figure out what to do with season four because it got canceled. Oh no. Yeah, huge cliffhanger at the end of season three. So now we're just stuck. But they're trying to shop it around and they're trying to make us a movie. So we'll see. So where I'm at right now is a certain person. Mm -hmm. who came in from the cold. Yep. Has had a matrimonious connection uh -huh. with uh -huh. another human. Okay. And some people who aren't so great in stature have been mixed up in decisions made by others. Right. Okay. All right. right. That's where I am. Okay. This is very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> so what I just did there for all the listeners was in code... Let Alex know exactly where the fudge I am in the season yep. without ruining it for you. Yes. Because by the time you see anything that's relevant to that, my mumbo jumbo will make zero sense and will have been forgotten. Exactly. Alex, pip pip. I like All right, it. So Pick it up. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so now I have to look really dumb. Oh, boy. Because I, I don't remember what the name of the show is. Manifest. 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 Yeah, it really was manifest. I didn't. I doubted it as soon as I said, "No, it can't be manifest." Yeah. Believe in yourself. <laughs> believe in yourself. Because we believe in you. I, I'm only a boot camper. Excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'll, I'll check that one out. I've, I've got two reasons to check it out now. One because it's called Manifest. That's a cool name. And yep. tool because Olga likes it. I figure, well, geez, maybe maybe I should be looking at this thing. Plus, yeah. you guys like it too. I mean, that that's yeah. always a, a good vote there. But you know, I like having the multiples. That's good. It's good. I actually went back and started rewatching it. Really? Yeah. Because oh. I'm like, what if there's some stuff that I miss? Because it's that type of show. Now, is it that type of show where you can also kind of speculate? What would you like to have it play out? Those are the kinds of shows that we yes. like. It can be that too. Because that's fun. 
I mean, we, we like taking you know the characters of a show and and here's the stopping point in the show. Okay, so what happens next? What do they do? You, usually, it involves Louise deciding which which couples pair off together. That that's usually the way the thing plays out in her. Oh, mind. you're gonna have some of that. Yep. Yeah. I have some beliefs mm-hmm. about certain couplings and such delights. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This sounds interesting. All right, I'm gonna check this out. <laughs> Alex is grinning. She's so excited. So right <laughs> Reduced importance, Alex. Reduced importance. <sighs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do humble. <laughs> that, that, that's Alex saying, screw the spiral. <laughs> <laughs> Cancel that. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right. Well, that's going to be good. That's going to be something to look forward to. Mm-hmm. Um, there was something else I was going to bring up with Daniel. What was it? I got to make notes. I, I was realizing there's two things I got to fix lately. First of all, I got to make better notes leading up to the shows. And second of all, I got to fix my calendar system. Because I actually had Andrew Kaplan on the show yesterday, and I forgot he was on the show. I mean, how bad is that? He, he did come, though, right? He did come, yep. And we got the link to him at the very last second. But, I mean, I got to be better organized than that. Oh, that, is just, that is not oh, acceptable. Man. So... I, I have a temporary fix in place so that it won't happen again. But... You need a production assistant. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't I'm, I'm down with that. <laughs> I'm just suggesting. <laughs> oh, 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 I see. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I think that would be a wonderful thing. Yeah. I, I'm putting it out to the universe. I would like a production assistant to just kind of emerge from the ethers. You know what you're going to get? A random app that pops up on your Facebook wall and says, "Hey, we can do this for you." Mm, maybe I do need to be more specific. Listening to everything that you say. Well, duh. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> but I do have to work on that. No doubt about that. Yeah. I have a fix, but yeah, it's it's too much of a, a klutzy fix. So, yeah, we'll fix that. Yeah. But the, what was the thing I was going to ask Daniel, though? <laughs> it went right out of my mind. <laughs> I don't know what it was. Oh, uh, no. All right. Well, then let's go back to the beginning. Because at the beginning, we were talking about your wedding shower. And we are talking yes. about the wedding coming up. That's always a nice, happy topic, anyway. Yes. So, I don't know. This this may sound dumb, but I know you want money. Is there anything from your gift list that you're really looking for? All of them. <laughs> All of them. <laughs> They're on the list because I want them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but no, there's um I don't know if you've seen them, but they're they they now have uh, utensils with with their they're un- called unicorn utensils, and they're unicorn re- utensils. So it's steel. Oh my god! Yeah. Like, so did, I they, did they make the did they make the line for you? Uh, I think so. Like holy cow! Guess we're redoing her kitchen. Anyway, so so I, I have the forks and knives and spoons, but then when I went online to get my, because my mother bought them, so to get my own set, I was like, oh, okay, and then they, Amazon's like, if you like this, you're going to like this, and then it just blew up from there. So now I have pots, pans, plates, dessert cups. <laughs> if they had napkins, I'd get them too. <laughs> but yeah. Okay, so the that, unicorn line. That, 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 that'd be great. Wow, okay. I, I'm impressed that there's a line called unicorn. I didn't know that. Well, no, that's what I call them. I don't know what they call them. Oh, you just yeah. disappointed me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure one oh. of them got to be called that. But well, it's like, shoot. they're cool. They're like iridescent rainbow colored steel. So it's like, they're always a different color right. depending on how you're holding it. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, we'll give like points to that. Yeah, I like it too. Especially for utensils. I mean, those are things we normally just kind of. Oh yeah, there's the forks. So okay, well, no big deal. Over to eat. That's the first thing they mention. Really? Yeah. Is the utensils? Oh, and, and the the robotic trash barrel. <laughs> we fancy over here. The, the robotic trash barrel. I mean, yeah. Come on. We have what? an automatic well, okay. trash barrel, and it and it opens and closes when you walk by it. <laughs> That's on my registry too. Just saying. <laughs> okay. Okay. 
I mean, does that get a little bit old every time you walk by the thing opens up? It, it did at first because it was like, oh, there's a ghost. And then it was like, okay, that joke's old. Like, that's what it's supposed to do. Like, come on. <laughs> I'm just thinking about it. It's easier because think about it. If you have the other ones where you have to step on the little step to open it up, this one's just like, oh, hey, you wave your hand over it and it opens up. So if your hands are full, you can just dump your trash in there. <laughs> that is pretty cool, though, to be honest. It's, it's cool when you see it, too, because you'll just walk by not knowing, thinking it's a regular trash barrel, and you're like, what? <laughs> you're not just an ordinary trash can. <laughs> so why can't you just walk on by? I'm going to wave my hand and fill you up with some junk. <laughs> You're out of control, Daniel. Oh, God. <laughs> Only Daniel can make up a song about putting stuff, stuff into a trash can. I mean, that is, that's really something. That's powerful. Oh, that's man. Me. I'm about that life. Thanks. <laughs> so this answers a question for me, actually, mm -hmm. because... One of the things that I remember early on asking myself, I was trying to visualize stuff. I was trying to imagine, okay, I'm, I'm trying to attract this stuff into my life, so I need to be able to imagine it. One of the things that people have the most trouble with is, well, uh, okay, I want to be a millionaire. You know, I've never been a millionaire. I've, I've never had money like that. How do I imagine it? Well, it's real simple. You watch Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> he is model Daniel. It's very simple. <laughs> A reverend, very silly one. <laughs> it just simplifies the whole thing. And and what it brings home is a millionaire is just like everybody else. Yeah. It's like that part of Us magazine where they say, <laughs> he says, <laughs> Mission accomplished. <laughs> Oh, I've never seen Daniel put up attitude like that. That was really cool. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really good stuff. All right. Well, we're looking forward to the shower on uh, on Saturday. That's going to be great. Saturday. It's going to be the first shower I've ever attended from the beach. I'm looking forward to that. That should be really interesting. Yes. You have a whole bunch of people coming. How are you going to handle opening um, the gifts, though? How do you do that? you just do it virtually? Um, the gifts were from Amazon, so they've been sent to my house already. Oh, so you already have them. Oh, okay. I got you. I just haven't opened them. Well, I, I learned my lesson the first time because I opened a box because I get Amazon stuff all the time. I opened a box and I told people to wrap their gifts. So if I open the box, I'll know, see it's wrapped. I'll know not to open it. Got it. Okay. Yeah. I thought it was wrapped, but the, the little pieces of paper that, that come with it that say, oh, congratulations or whatever. I thought I was reading that. It was a piece of paper that said what it was and the receipt. <laughs> And I was like, okay. And then under that piece of paper was another piece of paper that says, this is a present from Matt. Don't open it if you want to be surprised. And I'm Amazon like, really needs to work oh, other gig. They need to get oh. them organized better. Yeah, I think so. I mean, when you click the little thing that says, this is a gift, you kind of expect that, you know, the little price list isn't going to be part of it. That's all yeah. the whole point is. Don't put the receipt in. Like, oh, please. <laughs> Uh, it's all part of the fun, folks. It's all yep. part of the fun. No, it's going to be good. It's going to be a yeah, good uh, wedding good. shower. and good, good way. Now the uh, wedding season is officially, you know, started. Because once you have the yep. shower, now, you, now you're committed. You have to walk out of the aisle at that point. I, mean, I was going to anyway. I was, was like, that, that that was I might as well show up. <laughs> <laughs> Daniel's eyes just went bug. <laughs> oh, my God. She left Kenny. No. <laughs> did you see what I did there? Yeah, I see what you did there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the silliness is back on Thursday, and we love it. Yeah. All right. Well, then, looking forward to Saturday. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Alex. Thank you for everybody in the live stream committing your beautiful comments, and we'll see you all next time here on LOA Today. Goodbye, everybody.